Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady, continuing on with a late April weekly garden tour. As you can see, Reginald is your docent for the day. Um, we are experiencing some chilly weather right now. Um, happily, it looks like the, the long-term forecast is, is much more seasonal, but right now, obviously, I'm in a coat. I have on gloves. Uh, we had a cold rain yesterday, and that's well, not ideal for summer vegetables. So hopefully you heeded my warning, brought in your tomatoes and peppers and stuff uh, because temperatures in the upper 30s can really be super damaging to them long-term. It's not that they're getting frosted. It's the, uh, ph physiologically, those temperatures make it so certain nutrients aren't becoming available. They also become more susceptible to um, various diseases but especially wilt which is really common here in the southeast so if you can avoid having your plants out with with you know spring low temperatures it'll make a big difference but as you can see the back gardens are really starting to get colorful so let me turn this camera around so that you can have an up close view well there's no stopping it now the larkspurs are blooming Reginald actually likes this cold weather because he's very furry. He's also allergic to mosquitoes, so his ears are starting to get beat up, and I haven't been able to find a solution for that. Um, I haven't gotten anything accomplished in the garden. So uh, when I get back from this last week-long trip, I will do some cleanup in here. However, I'm not going to mess with these poppies <laughs> because, well... This is some of my better poppies. To be honest, I'm, I don't have as many poppies blooming right now as I was anticipating. Um, so I'm probably going to not have this available for people to walk through at Open Garden. You can see we need to take that redwood out stat. I've not gotten my material sample back, but it is sick and it needs to be removed. So that's top of the list. And the arugula is definitely driving me crazy, but... It's good that I'm gone all week, so I won't be tempted to do anything. I want this to self-sow, and therefore I need to leave it alone because the seed isn't ripe. If you pull it now, you're not going to get that cycling again. There's no question that allowing plants to actually go through the full seed drying process takes some patience. And I've had a lot of people asking like, well, when can I pull out my poppies and put in tomatoes? And it's like, yeah, middle of June. You have a long way to go. You have all of May. Uh, the poppies, if you, if you pull them out early, you just won't get seed to be able to grow for the next season, uh, which is fine. If you live near me, you can come over and you can buy poppy seeds from me. But, you know, if you're trying to do this as a method for you to be able to collect your own seed, you have to exercise some patience and actually wait for the seed to fully ripen. Um, don't worry, I'll be showing that exact process, but again, it's like six to eight weeks from now. So <laughs> you have to actually go through the process of enjoying the flowers while they're in bloom before you anticipate ripping them out. <laughs> and you can see here along the back patio, things have really jumped. Uh, these are all self-sown. None of them are actually in a bed. It drives me crazy, but, you know, sometimes that's where the very best plants are. Um, same thing on this side. Look at look at that tall, beautiful <laughs> um, larkspur. But everything in these beds is doing really well. You can see lots of flower buds coming. Um, this was actually the first one to open this weekend, and it's a really beautiful kind of whitish red that's a corn poppy there you see the fava beans continue to go they are awesome i can't believe how huge they are and look at all of the seeds i might actually be able to start offering fava beans this fall which has been my goal and lupins are blooming and i'm just really pleased overall and this border is, I mean, it might be a little more wild than what most people want, especially this close to the house. Um, but I love how the mustards look when they're in bloom. And honestly, when it gets a little bit warmer, the pollinators just go crazy. Um, on Saturday, when we were still warm out, it was like tons of butterflies and it was really beautiful. 
Um, the poppies are really small and I'm disappointed by that. And well, you know, every year is a learning experiment. This year, I don't think I sewed enough beds of just poppies and larkspur. And so I have a different look and that's fine. I'm acknowledging it. Next year, I want more poppies and larkspur. And here at the um, feed tank bed, I'm disappointed that more allium aren't doing their thing. Like really, I only have one that looks like it's supposed to. The allium that I bought from Brett and Becky's last year did much better, but they didn't perennialize. So I'm not sure allium subertii is really gonna be a top priority on my list. But lots of California poppies, obviously the mustard is starting to bolt. And I wanted to show you the garlic edge. So I'm pretty certain this whole edge is a variety called Transylvania. And then along the back here, I got these from a wonderful lady who visited during the uh, seed sewing class. And she brought me some special garlics. And I believe that's what this actually is. It's really substantial. There's quite a few through here. They're, they're kind of hard to distinguish, but they do look distinctly different. They have a broader leaf and they are starting to put out a flower scape. So I will be pinching flower scapes off soon. Well, that kale certainly is doing its thing. <laughs> it's a deer finally stopped eating it. And I'm really pleased with this broccoli patch. Um, everything in here is doing really well. I'm so glad that we got this planted when we did. Sometimes the spring sown seedlings don't come to fruition, but these are. Um, ideally, I'd get these sprayed with BT, but again, I have to go to the airport in like 20 minutes. So <laughs> I'm not gonna get that accomplished. I'll put that on Aiden's to-do list. And these containers that I replanted are doing well. Of course, the summer stuff does not like this temperature, but the Nemesias seem happy. Um, I'm not bringing these pots in because, well, they're too heavy. Um, but you see the eggplants. Here's another eggplant. Here's eggplant and pepper together. I got a jump start, and now nature is doing what she does. I know better and I still couldn't control myself. So I'm not being judgy when, I get, when I'm telling you like, don't rush the season. It's just genuine advice from things that I've done wrong in the past. Well, as we come around here, obviously no progress in the greenhouse. It's completely full of plants. All of these root pouches are looking good. Got a lot of poppies coming. You can see flower buds that will be open soon. Um, we've got kohlrabi here. We've got cauliflower, more broccoli in these. So I'm definitely pleased that we're gonna have another round of cool season vegetables and they love this weather. This is like, this is definitely the weather that benefits um, broccoli and cauliflower. And here you can see larkspurs, poppies. These of course were the corn poppies that were first to open and they just keep on keeping on. Look at all those flower buds that will soon be open. Well, as we walk across the backyard, first I want to show there's been some good progress on the greenhouse and I think they have big plans for this week uh, to get the roof on and start staining it. And well, I'm excited to get home uh, and, and see what the progress report is. And I can't believe how huge these sunflowers are. Now, they don't like this weather one bit, but they are enormous. And the barley got beat down a bit by yesterday's rain and also p potentially like deer or cats walked through here. I mean, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of different things that could potentially do this to stand a barley. And I'm just really impressed with how dense all of these borders are becoming. Pretty relieved that they're not like in full bloom yet, just because we still have a few weeks till the open garden, which is Saturday, May 11th from noon to 4 p.m. 
I do think this border is going to be spectacular. Um, I'm not super pleased with how all the front beds look, but this one just might make up for the rest of it. <laughs> so, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. And the fence line here, though there's a lot of weeds mixed in, when you're not looking up close and personal, it looks pretty great. It's nice and dense. You don't see any ground plane, which was certainly the goal. And um, overall, there's a lot of color, but there's a lot more color to come. I'm willing to bet that in a week from now, this is gonna be hands down, absolutely spectacular. Well, everybody, I hope that today's weekly garden tour will serve as inspiration for you. And I am certainly wishing you all the best and look forward to sharing more updates once I finally get home from this very hectic spring travel season. Thanks so much for watching and happy gardening.